evening. Uh, welcome to the Berlin Select Board Monday night meeting of November the 2nd, 2020. With us is Justin Lawrence on the phone, Flo Smith, John Quinn, and Brad Town. Also with us are Acting Town Administrator Tom Badowski and our Treasurer Diane Isabel. We'll start the meeting with a uh, calling the public hearing to order for wastewater ordinances. Um, anyone here to speak on that? Tom? Yes. The, uh, no one has called me on it. It's been advertised. Um, will it be another public hearing at the next select board meeting two weeks from now? And that should fulfill our charter requirements. Okay. Is it two weeks or 30 days? Well, it's, uh, it's this won't become effective until, I'm talking off the top of my head now, I think December 20th, right around then. Well, there'll be a second public hearing next, next select board meeting. So no comments on the ordinance for the wastewater, uh, wastewater, water wastewater, I should say. Hearing none, we'll close the hearing and open the uh, select board meeting. Uh, additions and changes to the agenda, CDART funding, um, and we will be taking, uh, Roberta Haskins has called in and said she will not be here. Um, any public comments? Sure, John. I have one. Sure. Yeah, come on up. Sit. Where would you like me to sit? Okay. <laughs> In the hot seat, right? Thank you all for taking the time. Thank you, friend. Hello, Angelina. Angelina has joined us also. Hi. So what's up, Jonathan? Good evening. My name is Jonathan Goddard. I'm a resident of Berlin, and I just wanted to make um, the select board aware of a a situation that occurred on Saturday, uh, October 24th. Uh, several of our neighbors had um, raised some pigs along Hill Street Extension. I live on Hill Street Extension. And they had then, on that Saturday morning, they slaughtered them um, in the same location where they had raised them. And my concern is I understand the tradition uh, in Vermont of raising and slaughtering your own food. and. And I respect that, and I think that's you know I think that's something that's ingrained in the culture here. Um, but at the same time, my concern is that they were quite close to the road, uh, and when I say quite close, probably less than 50 feet from the road, clearly visible from the road. There's a lot of people that cycle up there. Uh, one of my my other neighbors has a young, like a two or three year old daughter, walks on the road frequently, and I can only imagine if they had happened to be walking by there. When that was happening, I think that really would have been a very, very difficult thing for a small child or even some adults to really just come upon by surprise. Uh, and, uh, and I had spoken to uh, two members of the family actually before, uh, that, well, that week, before Saturday, to say, I understand you have the right to do this. I understand that, um, you know, and I respect that, but that's th at the same time, I asked them if they would try to find another location on their property that wasn't so close to the road. Um, and so I just wanted to raise that concern and, and, and I guess request that the, the board consider uh, adopting some type of ordinance that at least says if you're going to be slaughtering animals on your own property, that there ought to be uh, you know, some distance away from a road. I suppose it's one thing if you're on a class four road in the middle of the woods in the middle of nowhere, that's one thing. But at the same time, um, something that's clearly visible from a road where people frequently travel, I think is a different situation. And, uh, and I think that could, be, uh, could really be a difficult situation and really disturbing for, for, for people to come upon um, by surprise. We actually did uh, write a post at front court forum also just sort of noticing the public of this. We didn't name any names or anything like that, but at the same time gave a general description of the location. But we thought it was appropriate that people knew that this was happening so that at least they wouldn't just come upon it uh, willy-nilly. So um, 
thank you for your time, and uh, I hope you consider uh, something along those lines. What were the, um, how did they kill the pigs? Well, I didn't, I didn't witness it myself, so I can't speak to that directly, but I do know one of my neighbors, um, one of her windows of her home is, again, less than 50 feet, uh, so to say that it was literally right under her window might be a little bit of a stretch, but it was very, very close to her house and clearly visible from her house as well. And whether she comes to, chooses to, to come and speak li directly to what she saw, uh, that's, that's, her, that's her, for her, you know, that's her decision to make. I didn't see it. I had no interest in going down there and witnessing that, frankly, so uh, I didn't see it directly. Um, I witnessed it directly, but um, I just, we we're just very upset about that and, uh, and would ask for your consideration in terms of something that, again, is reasonable uh, but that takes, you know, the interest of everyone uh, in mind um, as to, um, you know, ensuring that, that people wouldn't be surprised about that in the future. Because I anticipate that they may be raising animals in that same spot again next year. So, so do you have a thought what is reasonable? Um, well, sure. I mean, my my thinking is that that it not be in plain view, but of course that's vague. That isn't really very specific. Um, but but that if, if if there's really no other option for for a property owner, if they're really limited in terms of where they might do that, that they at least put up some kind of street screen, maybe even some kind of notice to let people know that this is going to be happening on a particular day, knowing that they can't do it in a place that isn't visible, or at least directly visible. Um, for people, so I, I think those are some thoughts. I had thought about essentially, you know, drafting a, a draft ordinance, but I didn't go that far. I, you, you know, you folks can certainly are in the business of doing that. So I just wanted to share my concern um, tonight and, and the concern of my wife and, and my family as well, and, and others. And there may be others that will will share their opinion on it too. Um, but I just wanted to speak directly to it tonight and. Uh, and again, I spoke about this last week. I, I do believe it's the purview of the Department of Agriculture. Yeah. Uh, and so they trump a lot of things that lo local municipalities can do. Have, have you talked to them at all I have. about this? Yep. What was their what, what was their, was their take? Well, essentially, they they you know they said that that basically that um, it, it actually got kicked back around a little bit bureaucratically. They were talking about town ordinances and this and that, and I said, well, as far as I know, there isn't a town ordinance that speaks directly to this. So, uh, and I didn't question, again, the, the, the method or technique that they used because I didn't see what they actually did. I mean, I have since looked up the statute, but the statute speaks to commercial operations. This is not a commercial, op this is, you know, folks raising their own animals and wanting to eat healthy food, and I get that, I really do. Um, so, uh, and I understand that, that, you know, it's potentially a thorny issue, but at the, at the same time, I think there probably is some way to construct an ordinance that says, you know, feel free to, you have the right to, you know, slaughter, raise and slaughter your own animals, um, but at the same time, either provide some type of notice to let people know that it's going to happen, particularly if it's close to the road or highly visible. Um, so, yeah. So, they, so the short answer is they weren't particularly helpful. I know they did speak with, with the landowner. Um, and I let, them, I let the family know ahead of time, I'm going to be checking this out. I'm ignorant to a lot of this. I don't really know much about it, frankly. So I wanted to educate myself a bit about it as well. Um, but I let them, you know, I let them know that as well. So, I, you know, I tried to try to just express that to them. Fred, what's your sense of this? Well, <clears throat> I don't know the property, so I can't really speak to whether they could have been further from the road or not. Um, screen maybe, but again, it's the uh, it's personal property. It's the uh, or private property, I should say. Um, I would think out of a, out of a, um, not concern, but just out of uh, consideration for others, they would should be able to take and 
find a different place. So. Yeah, but when you assume that, that's yeah. what, that's but the again, yeah, I don't know the property, so I can't really say how much area they have to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, about being, we never raised pigs, so <laughs> I have helped slaughter them before, but that was a whole different ball game. We're well away from the road, so I really don't. I mean, no matter what we do, it's still going to come down to the Department of Agriculture. And I don't know uh, who did you talk to there? No. Oh, she's a. So I, I have, yeah, I've talked to a few different people. Yeah. And David, David, David. Yeah, was, I did. Yeah. I did speak with David. Yeah, yeah. Because I spoke to him and after we. Yeah. Him, yeah, and essentially, I mean, there was a wastewater or a uh, you know a, a wetlands concern as well. And he said, well, basically, you know, there are certain there are certain regulations that speak to how the you know the remains of the animals are treated, um, or how they're how they're taken care of. Uh, and whether or, not, or taking care of whether or not the remains are properly handled. So he did speak to that a bit, uh, and you know, but at the same time, he didn't speak at all to the method or technique or how they do it or the proximity to the road or any of those types of things. He basically was just said, you know, yeah, there are certain you can't just leave a pile of what's left just there. Um, for a variety of reasons. And, and these folks didn't do that. Right? No, they didn't do that. Yeah, not that I, not that I could see, because I, I walked by later that day. And, um, but I, I just, you know, I think about, I think about, the public road is a public road, so anybody can go on that road, anybody for, that lives in town or out of town or out of state or wherever, and if they came upon this kind of a thing, whether it was done humanely or not, and I'm assuming it was. It would be pretty horrific uh, in some sense. So I think that that's something that the board I would like would hope would consider. Um, so, and I, you know, obviously, do I expect an answer tonight? Of course not. Uh, I've, I've been in your, I've been on the board myself. I understand how the process works. So, but I, I just ask for at least thoughtful consideration about it. Okay, thank you, Calvin. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank, you. thank you, Flo. Thank you all. Yeah, you too. Before we move on, what what do you want done? What does this board want done? Well, we can't take any action on it because it's oh, yeah. public comment. It's not an uh, <laughs> item for the agenda. Um, but I would check with the, again, check with the Department of Ag. Because if we say one thing, they just, I, won't go, I don't want to go through the agony of this and just have the Department of Ag kick it out. I believe I've done that already. Yeah. Yeah. But the Department of Ag is not going to. I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know the landowners or the people that own the pigs, but I mean, a little, maybe a little consideration maybe a little bit more consideration of the neighbors and, and how it's done and where. I've slaughtered pigs several, several times. We've had pigs, you know, for, for years and years. And um, to try to move them to do it, it's, it's extremely difficult. You end up with a bunch of bruises and, you know, some angry pigs. Um, well, the creatures have had it. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, how it's done and, you know, looking up and down the road and, you know, do, trying to take some precautions around it. and moving the carcasses as quickly as possible to a place where they can be. I think there's some things that can be done. I don't know that we need an ordinance, but I'd like to think about it. Yeah. Anything else on this? Um, treasurer's report, Diane. Oh, everything I have is just in the agenda. So okay. Uh, do I look at the uh, licenses and vouchers? Have you done? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, motion for approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make a motion to approve payroll warrant 21-09 for payroll from October 11, 2020 to October 24, 2020. Paid on October 28th in the amount of $40,430.27. Also payroll warrant 21-09 with checks 2635 to 2676 in the amount of $176,373.26. I'll second that motion. Any further comment on this? 
Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Justin? Aye. Andrew. I don't know, I, I, I haven't actually seen them, so I'm just gonna let Brad go on that one. Yeah. Motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Uh, James, our police chief. <laughs> so, uh, so I'd like to introduce everybody to James yeah. Pomperion. I know you've met over Zoom, but over Zoom, yep. yeah, haven't physically met. Uh, uh, so, this is where we're at in the hiring process. We have two of the three uh, items covered. We have physical approved, uh, drug screening approved, and we're supposed to have background check done by Wednesday. So uh, uh, I wanted to bring James in today. Uh, I wanted him to just briefly give you a, a discussion, but then I'd also ask that, uh, because you are the ultimate approver, approval comes from the select board that uh, assuming the background check comes, uh, uh, you know, it's clear that you guys give uh, conditional approval tonight. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd like James to uh, welcome and maybe give us some thoughts on, on, on where you're at. And sure, it was a little bit like drinking from the fire hose. This is my first day on the job, um, but everybody's been very supportive. Um, Everybody else in the community has been very supportive about offering whatever assistance uh, I might be, need down the road. So overall, I've been pretty encouraged uh, despite the kind of mass download of information. Yeah, is Tony still here? He is for the he week is, or yeah, two yeah, weeks? Uh, uh, until uh, he's transitioned. Yeah. Yep. So a couple okay, weeks, we think. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And welcome. We're pleased to have you with us. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. I know it's only one day in, but is there anything we can do to support you at this point? No, like I said, everybody's been very supportive, so when I'm feeling a little bit lost, I go and find somebody and they help steer me in the right direction. Good. Uh, James, do you have any cases you have to close out for various City? Um, I do have one burglary case that I need to close out. Um, pretty much all done, except I need to get those folks into court. The yeah. documents themselves are all done. Okay. Do you any need time for that, or? Probably not, and I think it's something that I can either have another officer cite those people for me, or make yeah. some kind of arrangement. I don't really see sure. it taking away from here at all. Hmm. Yeah. I just say there, there may be times I'm called to testify yeah. in cases as well, they get down the road, but that's that's given, yeah. unforeseeable. Yeah. That's understandable. Yeah. How do you say your last name? Pompriant. Pompriant. So I move conditional approval uh, for James Popperian to be uh, the new police chief, uh, given that his background check comes back okay. I second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Congratulations. Welcome aboard. Thank you, James. You're more than welcome to stay. Uh, but you don't need to if you don't want to. <laughs> I will probably be on my way then. Unless the board has any other questions for me. Uh, I would suggest yeah. that, uh, the, the, that James comes in on a regular scheduled basis. You guys decide what that is. I don't know if it would be monthly or quarterly, but I, you know, I think that would be, uh, I don't know if you had that. I, I think that's part of the, the department head report that we're kind of thinking about, right? Yeah. Is, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether it's in person or yeah. Yeah. James, can you just take in? I don't know if the computer system will allow you just to take and give us a printout of uh, activity. I can actually. Um, I was given a printout earlier today. Maybe uh, once a month or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, uh, that not a problem at all. Our system can do that. Yeah. Is so, this uh, is this classified anyways or? Uh, not if we're talking rough numbers, not at all. Yeah, okay. just number just okay. Pretty generic. Okay. Mm -hmm. We can break it down into traffic stops, incidents, yeah. arrests, offenses. This is right out of Alcor. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. I just I think it'll take in uh, it'll take in um, if it's put into the record, it'll help down the road. Mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so I know uh, there's maybe some equipment. We talked about some equipment. We have the yeah, there's coming to the at least like one more. immediate need. Yeah. Um, that needs to be addressed. What's that? What is it? Our tasers are, five of them are reaching the end of their uh, shelf life. Yeah. So that'll be an expenditure the board's going to have to consider. Do we have 
Do we have that budgeted? We have equipment budgeted, and uh, I, I believe I, I just talking to Tony and James that you may be able to lease these over over a period of time, so it becomes more affordable than than a lump sum payment. And with that, I think comes some benefits. But again, I'm not a that's not what I do, yeah. so I'll let the professionals yeah. talk about that. Can the uh, can the uh, replacements be broken up over time? In other words, like like we do with your cruisers, every one gets changed out every other year or something like that. Unfortunately, no. I think five of them were purchased at the same time, so there. they're all. Um, the Taser Company will only provide warranties, if you will, yeah. for that shelf life. And if something happens with them, they malfunction in some way. There could be a lot of liability attached to it. So. Yeah. When you come back, um, need a cost comparison between purchase and lease. Understood. I know it's, it's a lot. I think when we got those, we got them through some grant. But at the same time, if, if the interest on the lease is going to be too much, then it makes more sense just to find the money and buy them again as a complete call it a complete set. So. Okay, well thank you very much, James. Not a problem, sir. Thanks, James. You'll have something for us at the next meet? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Okay, so for conservation commission dedicated meeting dates and venues? So uh, for the Conservation Commission folks on the on the call, we're gonna we're talking about the uh, the line item that concerns you folks and a dedicated meeting dates and venues. Uh, it was discussed at the last meeting, and I in, in your packets there are some uh, paperwork supplied by the Conservation Commission. It's a letter from Vermont Land Trust and the. Uh, development rights of, of the properties. So I know that the Conservation Commission has expressed an, an angst about um, collectively meeting uh, uh, to, to, dis, to discuss this matter. Uh, the, they would they would ultimately like a, a, a Zoom meeting. The select board is is a fans of Zoom meeting. So I, I may suggest to to this board uh, uh, if if each board uh, could form an executive committee, maybe of two members. And I John has something later on in the agenda that that he's going to discuss, but this is separate from that where. Two members from each board can meet. It's it's not not publicly warned, you know. It's yeah. uh, um, uh, and I would suggest that if, if the if the select board would like that staff from the town be there, they could help take minutes and stuff to that end. Um, that that may be a a, a relatively. Uh, um, Painless way to, to move this issue forward. I, I, I'm not going to pretend to know what all the issues are are here, um, but it, I know there a dialogue wants to be had, and I'm just trying to figure out the best way to have that dialogue that that yeah. everybody is comfortable with. When if it's a Zoom meeting, when can the uh, Conservation Board uh, be a party to it? Did you get any ideas? Ellen? Ellen? Tom Willard, are you on the phone? I don't think it was those two. I thought it was someone. I'm sorry. Andre. Andrea? Oh, did I get it wrong? Um, no, it's Andrea. If, 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 if it was going to be a Zoom meeting, do you guys have preferred times and dates? Wendy, I'm sorry, Wendy. 
Oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, I'm on the phone now. I can barely hear you, though. Um, I'm pretty flexible with times and dates. How, how about if it's, if, if it's with full board members? Does, your, does the commission have a preferred meeting time already? You guys meet during the afternoons, I think, correct? We usually meet on Thursdays um, at 2, but I think we're flexible. A lot of us are flexible as far as that goes. I can meet any day next week. Oh, well, for me, it's better in the evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My but, preference would be evening as well. Yeah, but, I mean, if it's going to be in the afternoon, it's in the afternoon, and I'll be there. You guys tell me what you want. Um, if, if the executive committee is more in line, you want to do or whole boards? I, I, I don't. What's your thought, Justin? I would prefer to do a whole board. That way, everybody's on the same page. There's nothing lost in any translation. Um, I think it would be the most efficient process overall. And Ellen, she grew that. Uh, Wendy? Yes, I can hear you. So, you're open to a, a full board meeting, but you prefer it to be uh, through a Zoom meeting, correct? Yes, that would be, Zoom would be better, but we would be open to a full board meeting, yes. Poll everybody and find out when they can do it. <laughs> how does, I don't know. I mean, yeah. How does next? Anytime. How does next Tuesday at five thirty sound? Works for me. Same. Tuesday at five thirty. Tuesday at five thirty, Wendy. Yes. Um. Would that be tomorrow? No, no. Next Tuesday. You give everyone some notice. Give yes. us time to warn it. That's that good for me, yes. Okay. Is, is Tom on the line? Tom Wheeler, are you on the line? Doesn't sound like it. Okay. Is he on the line? I'm not sure if I'm talking for everybody or just for myself. Wendy, you're the only one that I've heard from the Conservation Board. Okay, um, I will go ahead and say fine for Tuesday at 5.30 and then I can check with the rest of the board about that. Okay, I will, I will uh, be in touch with you then, okay? Okay, that sounds great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So, so is there a, I just don't know the issues. What, 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 are, what are we trying to... For it so, so I, I think, and uh, I only have secondhand knowledge because I haven't been directly part of any of the conversations. It sounds like Josh Walker and uh, the Bass Snow Machine Club in Northfield, and the, I think it's the Thunder Chicken Snow Machine Club in Barrie, have devised a trail where they don't need to cut any trees, and it uses a small portion of the um, Berlin Town Forest up near the top. Doesn't use the entire thing like like I think some were expecting or some had thought, like using the entire road down through. Um, and I, I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate, but I think we need to see the map, and I think Josh could provide that. And I think we need to talk about... Um, so he needs to be invited? Josh Walker, yes. Um, and we need to know if the piece that... They're co the, the bass trail is proposing to come across has any um, restrictions. Restri have any restrictions, and and if the board chooses or doesn't choose, can we get around those, or you know, with a management plan, and how do we go about that, and what what's the process there? And then I think we ought to give at least a few minutes uh, for public comment for Black Road. Um, the the gentleman that came in last week had some concerns. I've looked at the road. Um, I, I see his concerns, but it's, I mean, in, in my own opinion, it's really no different than 
than a car coming down that road. I've, I've found that you know some machines on Lover's Lane in Northfield and other places, they're not all over the place being crazy. They're, they're following the rules. So I think we should at least hear them out though and understand if there's more people on the road that have concerns. John, did you mention that, I didn't come here, did you mention that any, you know, one of the things we've heard from the conservation is that um, they don't think the easements, were, you know, are going to allow it. Um, so any of the, it would it be possible for us to get any of that? I mean, I'd like to have all the information there so we can't say, well, we're not sure that this easement not allowed or this, this doesn't. Um, any, any documentation whatsoever on that property as far as easements something we want right yeah i i do think that we have um they provided that for tonight yeah they provided that tonight so you should have it in your packet justin i didn't see it but uh, once again okay it, it wasn't it, it wasn't in a packet i mailed out i just handed it out oh, okay. okay i'll get it to you justin what is that okay is that your noise we also uh, we spoke to caitlin from um, Vermont Land Trust, and on the easement agreement, it says that snowmobiles are possible, but she um, indicated that we would need to update our management plan if we decide to go that way, um, and that would also require public input before we um, updated the plan. So that was um, what Vermont Land Trust told us when we saw them last week. Oh, good. That's great. So, so Wendy, in, in your opinion, would this meeting that we're having can be considered public input? That, or would it have to be on the actual plan? It would probably have to be on the plan draft, the draft plan, right? You'd think it would be. It seems I'm, like an easy. I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Can you repeat the question, please? I think I answered most of it. Would it be possible? I think I answered my own question once I thought about it for a minute. I think I'm all set. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just really having a hard time hearing people. Does this board want ORCA to participate in this? They do it remotely. So it would, require, um, it would require public input. We'd also need to review, there's a wetland um, on Dalton Road that would need to be checked. There's a couple of things along those lines that we have to review before we can make a decision. Check with various people, you know, just to make sure everything's in line. And also, we'd want to check with all the abutters of the town property. Um, so there'd be, you know, multiple things that we need to look at. So if they're utilizing trails that are already uh, accessible and have ATV traffic allowed, that would still be an issue with potential wetlands if they're not crossing any. I don't know for sure. Um, my guess is that having a snowmobile going across would not be a problem, but if there is any need to cut trees or um, deal with the vegetation, that could be a problem. But I'm, I'm not an expert on that. I, we really would need to talk to somebody who's a wetland person with the state. Does it make sense to there's two organizations that want this to happen, correct? The chickens and the Northfield folks? And the citizens that own snow machines, right? Okay, okay. Right. Yeah. But, but there's those, those are the two, two associations. Yeah, that, that, that have some wherewithal, okay, right. right? Can they write up an agreement that for both parties to consider? And, and just, and maybe that's the easiest part. They, Give them this, give them the, the, this easement documents. Yeah. So you guys don't have to go through it, you know, spending your time and treasury on it. These guys don't have to do that. Right. Have, give it to them and have say, you know, we're, we're, we, the, the town can be open to this, but you have to give us a plan that's going to work. Yeah. yeah. And is, can by next Tuesday that be done? I, I don't know. I, I don't know the chickens and the, from the hens. So, well, I would I would think they must uh, they must have lawyers. I would think that. they would. I think they probably have crossed this before. Sure. Yeah, because they go across some Northfield conservation yeah. lands as well. Yeah. I believe Northfield Town Forest. 
So the thing would do would be to have uh have I'm not volunteering to do this. I'm oh, just no, no, no. I'm just suggesting a, a four way forward here. Well if we if we were to do that, it would just be having the uh, uh the folks here that want this to happen to get a hold of the, the Thunder Chickens and the uh, North Hill Club and have them uh, devise a plan for it to happen. Yeah, so I think that makes so sense. So I'll, yeah. I'll take the action item to talk to um, Josh Walker, who's kind of the Berlin yep. point of contact because they don't have their own snow machine club, yeah. and have him talk with the Vast Clubs and talk with Wendy, who would be best, Tom Willard? Um, repeat the question for me. I'm sorry, it's just a jumbly sound I'm getting. Uh, what are you looking for? Who, who would be best for Josh Walker to talk to about uh, some proposed language for the management plan and uh, uh, for the select board to review? Would that be Tom Willard, probably? That would probably be Tom Willard. Um, if I understood you about it happening in a week, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, because part of the process is, is going to be soliciting public opinion, which is going to take a little bit longer than just a week. No, this, this, is, um, this is just but a, I, yeah. I do I do think that starting to get, um, we're not really clear yet about um, if the trail needs any maintenance to bring it up to par, um, we're not clear about um, not, you know, how wide is the groomer? We don't know that. Uh, um, do we need to cut trees? Do we need to think about that? There's a lot of detail that um, it would be really helpful if the Thunder Chickens could perhaps write down exactly what they're thinking, you know, how wide does the trail have to be, how much. You know, is there any maintenance up front that needs to be done? Is there any ongoing maintenance that needs to be done? Um, so that those types of things we still need. And we're not really clear how the trail is going through to um, the Baptist Trail number 12 down in Northfield. So if we could have a map of that perhaps with which landowners are affected and which ones have been um, notified you know or have agreed to have the trail go across their property that would be helpful what so so i'm a little confused there because we're as as help me understand why we need to know all the the landowners that it crosses we're we're talking about just the berlin town forest piece the other the other pieces are private agreements between the citizens and the vast snow machine clubs yeah, I guess my understanding was that um, the trail was going through to Route 12, and it would. Um, and Northfield has contacted us already and said that they won't allow motorized vehicles across their property. Um, so I, I guess it's just to get a feel for what is the overall picture as well as what's going on on our property. So it's my understanding that they will be utilizing from conversations that I've had existing trails that are already in place. They won't even need to cut a tree, in fact. Um, and that once they exit Berlin Town Forest, they will be utilizing private property owners trails um, or accessing trails through private property. Uh, and so that's why I think this meeting, although it may be brief, um, it would definitely get all the information that everybody on both sides is looking for out on the table so that we can actually maybe develop a plan or uh, an idea that would work well for both both the conservation committee, the town of Berlin, the snowmobile clubs, and the residents that are hoping to be able to utilize that. Yeah, I, 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 I think we have the majority of what we... That would be really helpful because... I don't feel like we all have all the information at this point and to be able to get together and mm -hmm. just everybody bring what they have into a meeting um, and then we can start working towards the next step but we really need to sort of get everything out there on the table. It sounds good. 
Anything else on this? Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. So are we planning for Tuesday at 530 or you'll get back in touch with us? Yes, we'll be planning for Tuesday, next Tuesday, 530 p.m. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. I could have been wrong about whether it was the Thunder Chickens or the other one, but my point was it's one of the very snow <coughs> snowmobile clubs. I think I'm pretty sure it's the Thunder Chickens. They're usually in here. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, 15 Road Cold Breaker. Anything else on this? Yeah. Uh, where's my notes? Uh, so, uh, I don't have my notes here. So, the, uh, Fisher Road did the drilling over the last week. Uh, the drilling uh, was to determine what sort of base soils are there for a proposed new uh, structure to replace that culvert on Fisher Road. Um, the, the borings show that it's 30 to 40 feet of really uh, muck and so clay uh, and nothing that you're going to build on. So uh, the uh, we're we're getting the geotechnical report done uh, and we hope to have that uh, soon which is really then tells you what kind of foundation you need and and, and the structure is likely going to be that half pipe structure that you guys saw a couple meetings ago um, uh, what kind of uh, uh, foot footing system is required for that once you know that, that's a driver of the cost. Uh, and I, I keep saying in two weeks, but I hope in two weeks that we have at least some budgetary numbers that you guys can, can look at. Uh, and then need to talk about how you're going to fund it. And, and, uh, yeah. uh, but um, it, it could have been better news. But where, where, where it is good news, when we did our survey in the, in the stream, width isn't as great as we thought, uh, so it's it's not going to be a 40 foot structure. It's probably be getting closer to a 30 foot structure, but still. Okay. Okay, uh, Brandy Saxton and Carl Weasel, Berlin Town Center. Yeah, Carl, you want to come up? Chuck, you want to take a seat here, maybe? Chuck, you. Chuck, you may want to introduce yourself to everybody. Hi, folks. I'm Chuck Storrow. I'm a lawyer based in Montpelier. I represent Berlin Mall, LLC. Brandy has come down with something that's nasty. She's not here. Um, so, uh, and I think Paul, Paul, you're on the call, correct? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Oh, Brandy is. Brandy, you here? I'm here too. Okay. You, you. So. Ah, uh, uh, these masks. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, uh, you guys received in your packet, I think I sent it out Friday, the draft applications on both the new town center and the neighborhood development area. I'm going to walk through these applications with you. Uh, uh, we would like the planning commission at their last meeting voted to accept these applications and send it off to you folks for your review and approval, which would then send it to uh, the staff of the Department of Community and Housing Affairs, or whatever they call themselves now. Um, so I'm just going to walk through the, the two applications. Go ahead, Carla. It's for their review. It's, it's not the it's not the complete application. It's for their feedback. Yeah, they're actually they're actually partners in this with us. Yeah. So they are going to review it. They're going to give us feedback on what it takes to to get this in front of the uh, downtown board and get approval. So. But yeah, my, my concern remains the same, though, that once we submit this for a review, if we change the property boundaries, they would need to go back to them for a review again before we could actually submit it, right? Mm, not necessarily. I don't think so. I mean, okay. I, I mean that, that review is like, you know, here there are multiple pages. 
that review, I think, would probably the answer is yes, but it's not going to take, you know, forever. Yeah. Um, that, I, I am concerned that Mr. Lamberton's property still isn't a part of this. And I think we have we discussed this, John. And, and uh, again. Oh, I thought it was time to discuss it. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so uh, I'm going to go through here when we get to that. If, okay. You know my. Uh, my notes here. Um, so, uh, and Chuck, you could, whatever, if you want to add anything. So this, the, uh, the new town center application, where does it say it on here? Um, uh, town center application right here. So there's two documents. Okay, so, so if you go to page two, uh, there's a whole list of uh, included documents. This is stuff that we didn't include in here just for sake of printing. It's going to be included. You guys have seen it before. It's, it's the new zoning. It's the street layouts. It's, it's a whole bunch of things that, that you've seen in, pe in the past and really haven't, haven't changed. Um, so what's interesting, if you look at page three of this, of this uh, report that has the aerial photographs on, um, You'll, you'll see the, the top photograph was in uh, 1962, and you can see the, the lack of development that w was there in 1962. And then uh, the interstate came in, and the, and the, and the uh, 50 years later, then you have the bottom, the bottom uh, uh, example of, of what, is, what is there now. And you can see how transportation has played a key role in the development of Berlin over, over the time. Uh, first it was the airport, and then, uh, which became the regional airport, and then it became the interstate. And so, um, uh, the, uh, most of it in 62 was farmland, and 50 years later it's, uh, represents 25% of the total property tax value in the town of Berlin. So, um, uh, so I'm going to have you go to, to uh, something new. To, it's, it's map H1. Looks like this. H1 is on the bottom here. About four or five pages back. I've seen it, so feel free to okay. yeah. I got it. Go ahead. Okay. So this is really new, this this depiction of, of the of the of the map. Um, That's the right one. So it's H one on the bottom yep. right hand corner. H is out the green. There we go. Right here. Page one. Oh, you got it? I do. Okay. Thank you. So, the, we, when we were developing this application, we tried to meet with all of the, uh, the stakeholders who will be sitting around the downtown board and have meetings with them to discuss this application and, and get their feedback. Um, the most, one of the most recent meetings we had was the uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. We were in front of their executive board. And they, they really like this core section of, of the development where it has the, the streets uh, developed here. Um, it's got the, uh, the town green, this urban form. But they really did not like the, uh, the Route 62 side. Route 62 was too spread out, more auto-oriented. And so for the last two weeks, uh, with our consultants and the folks from the uh, uh, Berlin Mall, we've revised that map to, to this section right now that's at 62, okay? It's more of a replic replicating this urban form, uh, squared off streets, sidewalks throughout. Uh, it it will change the configuration of Berlin Mall Road. Right now, Berlin Mall Road would go through the one building, I think it's building E there, um, if it was depicted on here. 
Uh, so this squares this off, can add that other building. Uh, it has a, we, we put space in here for a municipal building with the uh, basketball courts and a pickleball, uh, pickleball court there. And so we think this is going to get greater approval by uh, a lot of folks around the table uh, taking this from a less uh, auto uh, uh, centralized um, uh, development to more of a pedestrian. Uh, and around this entire this entire uh, uh, campus now is a, uh, uh, a multi-use path, eight-foot multi-use path. I'm going to be talking to you later about that as part of the VTrans grant that I introduced a couple of meetings ago. So this is the form that that this that, that this project is 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 taking on now. Um, um, uh, we've got good partners with the with the mall. We've got good partners with the hospital, um, and um, and so I'm going to be coming back to this map later, and we'll talk about it in in, in the neighborhood development area. The further uh, maps show sections of this of this uh, each of these properties. So, like H two shows a blow up of that Route 62 section that we were just talking about. Uh, and you can see the, the uh, items are in there. So of the whoa, one, two, three, four, five, five buildings that are there, three of them are dedicated to, to housing. Uh, the uh, fourth one is a restaurant, and the fifth one is, uh, can be used for a municipal uh, use. So that's the 62 gateway. Uh, the the next sheet, if you look at uh, page uh, H4, this is really the beginning of the core of the of the new town center. This has one, two, three uh, residential, excuse me, four residential buildings in it, surrounding a community green, and some uh, commercial retail uh, uh, spaces uh, on the. Uh, in, which would be in the now the mall parking lot. Uh, go over to uh, sheet eight, uh, H6. This is the property that the uh, Central Vermont Medical Center controls. They uh, 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 would like to, to site an additional medical office building there. So that's the larger structure you see there. And it also has some um, uh, smaller commercial retail spaces. You can see that uh, that, uh, that the hospital is going to uh, connect their their campus across Fisher Road to this campus with the Sky Bridge. You see the Sky Bridge uh, uh, portrayal. That Sky Bridge down in the lower right hand corner. Um, and so these maps just give a little greater detail on on what the what the, the plan was. Um, I, I, I know there's been some, some discussion about, you know, why isn't, aren't buildings built in front of the mall and, and make that mall, that make that a road, the main street. And the simple answer is it's private land. Um, it's the, the owners of that land don't want to do that concept. And though that may have been a vision 20 years ago, um, it's unless this board would like to try to do eminent domain, which I wouldn't suggest we would do. That, that uh, uh, we we look at this plan as a precursor to ultimately maybe getting to that uh, uh, infill on that parking lot. Uh, Chuck, Chuck, you're here. You maybe could talk about your clients and, sure. and their their thought process as well. Yep. yep. Folks, um, as can I, I said, can I just add one no. thing though? And I, because I think if, if you think about the way it's going, the way it looks now, the, what's in front of the mall could ultimately become a pedestrian walkway, yeah. like a, as opposed to a street. And I think it, it ultimately makes a lot more sense doing it this way if you really think ahead. But anyway, sorry to interrupt. No problem. Um, I could just say at the outset that our client, you know, supports uh, this concept. We've had a number of Zoom meetings with Tom and Brandy and. 
Paul, Carla, I think you may have been in on some of those where we pounded out the details of the layout here and all. Um, uh, you know, as far as uh, redeveloping the parking lot, the, you know, the issue there is is that the leases that the mall has with uh, the individual stores there call for so many parking spaces per so many thousand square feet of lease space. And so, you know, we can't um, do anything about that without breaking those leases. You know, the mall still is economically viable. Uh, it's a challenging environment for retail. Um, um, in-person retail, but it, it's still working, and so um, nothing that's shown here would prevent that from happening down the road if conditions change in the world, you know, um, but um, uh, this is a good concept for, you know, taking the new town center concept and, and basically superimposing it on a uh, uh, suburban shopping mall that was planned in the 70s, built in the 80s, and is still a viable operation as a shopping mall. Um, so, um, you know, I think it, it, it's a good balance between the sort of the new and the old, uh, without prejudice to the new continuing forward. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. So, I just want uh, to go through some of this. So in here uh, are the goals of the of the town center. It's really reflected in our town plan. The, the, the whole planning process uh, started in 1999. Uh, you know, it talks about the investments that the town has made in this area from utilities. Approximately $7 million has been spent in water and sewer upgrades in and around uh, uh, this area. Uh, if you look on page seven, you guys have seen these maps before. It has the, the existing conditions. Uh, the right below that is the, the street grid. Uh, it, it took a, a, a good bit of convincing uh, in negotiations with the with the mall owners to to reconfigure how traffic flows there. You know, and but they I, they see the value of 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 traffic going behind the, the, the lots now. As you can see, uh, uh, the, the blue lines there that, in effect, go at the back side of, of, the, of the parking lot. So the, the number five there is the first street grid. Off of that will be built the future street grids. And, and the, the next, if you go to the next page, page eight, the pedestrian spine. <coughs> That shows the, the sidewalks, the uh, multi-use paths, the um, sky bridges, all the way that folks can move around without needing a, needing a vehicle. Um, and on page nine, the new town center, I'll just read to you what statute says. New town center is the area plan for or developing as a community central business district composed of compact, pedestrian friendly, multi-story and mixed use development that is characteristic of a traditional downtown, supported by planned or existing urban infrastructure, including curb streets with sidewalks, and on street parking, stormwater treatment, sanitary sewers, and public water supply. We really think we've baked all of that into this into this application. Um, uh, 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 we've spent a, a good bit of time on this. Uh, the planning commission has, since this this planning commission since uh, 2016 has, has been working to this end. Um, uh, the if you if you flip the page, what is this page ten? It's Three maps at the at the top of uh, in, it, in, in the in the middle is Berlin Town Center. On the on the left is Montpelier, and on the right is Barry. They're de they're designated downtowns. Each of them are roughly the same size and area. Uh, so you can see what how you know we're comparing apples to apples, uh, uh, and and we we talk about. Uh, 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 park 
parking, which is a sensitive subject with some of the partners in the downtown board. Um, and we make, I think, very good arguments of, of, about the parking. But you can see our area is, um, is, is 118 acres. The, uh, the, each of the, well, some, some are not map. Put another next page over that same area uh, is on page 12 of that same area. Montpelier is 33 acres. Uh, Berlin Town Center is 20 acres, and Berry City is 26 acres. Montpelier has uh, 3,250 off-street surface parking spaces, which is 90, 98 acres, 98 spaces per acre. Uh, Berlin uh, has about 20 acres of off-street surface parking, 2,150 off-street surface parking spaces, or ours is 107 spaces per acre. So we're, we're getting more parking spaces in less area than either the, the city of Montpelier or the city of Barrie. So we think those are good arguments on, on the amount of parking that we have. Uh, I'm just going to... the the second paragraph uh, on page 12 down, I'm just going to read it. Uh, 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 before I start reading, Central Vermont uh, Medical Center about uh, a year ago put in an, an application to to revamp their campus, and, and one of the, one of that uh, one of the items they looked at uh, was a parking garage. Uh, and I'm just going to read now. The hospital's cost estimate for the parking structure. Um, equated to $29,500 per parking space. $29,500 for a tower, parking tower. Uh, nearly 10 times the cost of surface parking stru uh, structure. So we really think that's a compelling argument to, to you know, um, not uh, do a parking structure at this time. Uh, that, that cost came out to $34,000 per space. Um, uh, in in uh, uh, in Montpelier's Montpelier was looking at one too, and, and Montpelier's came out to thirty four thousand dollars per space. That's a significant amount of money. Uh, the town of Berlin doesn't have that treasury to, to 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 put into that. The market conditions are just not there for for tower parking. Uh, the um, I'm going to go back to uh, uh, map H one again. There are, uh, outside of the, the, the two privately uh, owned uh, residential units, uh, uh, the Dukovic property and the, and the uh, Fox Run, there are five other housing uh, structures that are proposed in the new town center. The, uh, uh, There's, a, there's an average, uh, anywhere between 190 to 240 units. Let's just say it's 200 units with 200 people in it. That's 400 people. That would increase the population of Berlin by about 15%. This, this, those residential properties right there. Um, the, uh, 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 compelling, uh, when I said that this area generates about 25% of the town's total property tax revenue, Nearly 3,000 people work in this area uh, of Berlin, and almost nobody lives in it. So this plan will bring bring uh, housing to the area, much needed housing to the area in, in central Vermont. So, <coughs> I, if you guys have any questions on this, I am going to ask you to to uh, uh, move this forward to uh, uh, to the to, to the agencies. Uh, Committee for review. John brought up the uh, Mr. Lamberton's property, and I think that's that's best addressed in the next application. So, but before we move off of this one, if there's any questions, let me know. Good. Okay. I, why are we include? Uh, I'm a little confused as to why we're including the hospital in the downtown. It was really a a uh, a strong suggestion from the agency. It was, it was their opinion that that would be a good selling point 
uh, for inclusion in the in the downtown center. It wasn't originally there. It was it was their very strong recommend recommendation that it be put in there. And and I think what it does, it, it brings to the to the town center somebody with rel relatively deep pockets, right? I mean, they 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 they. they I don't want to ask that right now. Well, I know that, but uh, but historically, uh, they have they have political clout. They have uh, sources of funding that are, are not available to municipal entities. Uh, they, are, uh, they, are, they need housing stock for, to help retain employees at the hospital. It's the, it's the second largest in, uh, employer in central Vermont. We, we need, I think we need, as the town, we need to partner with them to make sure that they are a viable entity in the in the in the for, uh, foreseeable future, and I think this plan does that. Uh, and so, those are several reasons, John, why why they're why they're in it. Just trying to think. Historically, you had Heaton Heaton House or Heaton Hospital in Montpelier. There was two hospitals and one in Barry. I yep. can't remember the name of the Barry one. Yep. They they both both closed in '69 and this was, to the this lot, the lot center. Yes, yeah. So, uh, uh, any other questions here? I, I think I really think our design for that Route 62 entrance now is a is a great design. Uh, it it. Um, it, it addressed a, a, a good bit of the concerns that the folks that we met with had, uh, and it, it took a good bit of good, good bit of uh, a partnership with the with the mall to uh, to come around to that. And so, I appreciate their efforts and, and what they've done. So, if you're not in this this bubble drawing that we made, and you want to build outside of it, that would be considered sprawl. No. And I'm going to talk to you about that. Okay. okay? And so that's a misnomer. And I think uh, 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 I, I wish Wayne was here. To, and I think they have uh, uh, come to that realization themselves. And Brand, if you want to talk to to the discussions we have with John Granier and Wayne uh, uh, about the sprawl issue, um, uh, uh, now would be a good time before I jump into the middle of, of all this other stuff. Okay. Uh, if you can remember uh, back to looking at the benefits uh, that come along with uh, the two designations, you'll remember that there are um, various, various um, benefits in terms of Act 250 relief. The, one that's really important for the property owners and developers in this area of Berlin is um, the definition of being considered an existing settlement for Act 250, and that's the 9L or the sprawl um, criteria. Um, so property that's in either the neighborhood um, development area, the NDA, or in the new town center will get that relief. So that will, um, that, that's one of the major pieces that will be available in Berlin. Some of the other benefits will be a little less tangible, at least in the near return to um, property owners. And we have been um, talking with um, Mr. Lambton and his, his engineer. Um, I think there's general agreements that meeting the new town center definition um, with a boundary that runs east-west <clears throat> is problematic uh, because of getting through the wetlands and the stream area. Um, and Tom's going to show maps of that that are in the NDA application. Um, next, we get a better sense of exactly how um, significant uh, that area is to, to cross through. Thank you, Brandy. Um, oh, go ahead. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to call, this is the other packet now. I'm going to call your attention to um, page F as in Frank 1. 
you can see the uh, the large area, which is the, the new town center that we just talked about. Uh, the neighborhood development area is up to a quarter mile around that area, the new town center. And so the larger of the uh, squares or rectangles, that's Mr. Lamberton's property. And uh, then there's a, one by the chamber and uh, help me with the name, Carla. Who's the farm? Uh, Burks. Uh, yes. And so uh, both of those parcels are earmarked for neighborhood development um, uh, areas. As Brandy mentioned, if, you, if it's deemed a uh, neighborhood development area, it is, uh, uh, what's the term you use, Brandy? A pre, not pre-existing, it's a... Uh, an existing settlement. An existing settlement, which, which takes out uh, 9L, which is the sprawl question. So that addressed uh, directly Mr. Lamberton's concern with with the sprawl. So uh, uh, so I'm going to flip that page over, and you get uh, G1. Go ahead. I'm sorry, John. It's okay. Uh, the neighborhood development area. So it's just just the name of it. Listening to Mr. Lamberton when he came in, he does not have interest in in how putting up a housing development. He like putting commercial buildings. It's, it's, it's and, uh, that the, the sprawl issue goes way even with, for commercial buildings. So he would still be able to do that. Correct. There's no limitation on what you can build. It's just it's just a designated area. You get you get extra yeah. benefits with residential housing. Okay. Yep. And so. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Brandy. You want to interject, or are you good? Um, yeah, I was just going to confirm that the, the 9L, uh, 9L is actually only applies to commercial development in the first place. It doesn't apply to residential. So that exemption out of 9L, or relief from 9L, would be for um, commercial development. OK. And uh, Mr. Lamberton's engineers agreed, or understood? Uh, yeah, I, I think he, he understands that he does get that um, being either in the um, Newtown Center or in the neighborhood development area. They both get that same benefit. Yeah, the, the meetings that we were at, that really came to the conclusion. So so what's the benefit of being in the new town center versus the neighborhood development area? Uh, somewhere back many moons ago, um, I gave you the entire checklist of benefits and you can actually run through and see the difference. Um, the major remaining difference between the two um, designations uh, is priority for um, state buildings. And that's something that you do get in the new town center, but you don't get in the neighborhood development area. Uh, but that doesn't apply. We've been having more conversation with the folks at um, State and doing a little bit more research um, and have shared that with Mr. Lamberton. I haven't heard back from him um, on this issue, but I did share with him what we have learned. Um, and that the state buildings that they are, are worried about or they're, they're, they're applying that criteria to are what you might consider sort of the the retail building, so any place that a member of the public would go for a transaction, so something like a DMV office, um, or you know, a, a place where the, the public uh, comes and goes. Um, it wouldn't apply to buildings like um, B trans, um, you know, garages or police barracks or you know, health department laboratories, um, that sort of thing, where there isn't. Um, sort of direct customer um, service. And I think the one other thing that came through and what I saw of the, of the emails between the, uh, Wayne and his people was that his engineer basically said he didn't think that the, the size and scope, the size in the town center would fit what he wanted to do on his property. So there are a lot of reasons why he probably wouldn't want to be in the town center. It would be, it would be more limiting in terms of sizing. Is, I, is I just want to make sure his 
concerns were answered and we've definitely been speaking with them. I mean, issue. yeah we've definitely been brandy spent a lot of time on this i think and tom and yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to i mean I, I think unfortunately some of wayne's experience is you know making him question but i think yeah. they've talked it through and i think that they've come to the same realization so but again i hesitate to speak for something right no i'm not right. speaking for wayne i, I think the biggest I think um, the biggest thing that also came through is that we, there, everyone's pretty much in agreement that if we include the property, we won't get the designation because we cannot connect the property from from the from that side. Right. So even his, I, uh, the email I saw from his engineer said he was pretty certain we wouldn't be able to meet the requirements. Yeah. So to that end, if H1, if you pull up the map H1, this, this is the, the wetlands areas. So you could see between Mr. Lamberton's property and the, the Berlin Town Center, there's a wetland that splits them. And the, 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 the new town center, uh, from, the, from the definition that I read before, is um, a walkable Central business district composed of compact, pedestrian-friendly, multi-story, mixed-use development that is characteristic of a traditional downtown. I would hesitate to, to, to put a cost on trying to build roads or sidewalks or pedestrian pathways through that, through, through this section. It's just, um, and and you can see in, so there's some some additional wetlands in, in Mr. Lamberton's properties, the little fingers that are problematic as well. Um, uh, what the neighborhood designation area uh, can also get it can get funding for sidewalks on Payne Turnpike North because both of the both of the parcels that are now in the neighborhood development area uh, would front Payne Turnpike North. So that adds to the uh, 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 connectivity uh, um, and brings it, ties it, even it, it ties it as best it can to the to the uh, new town center without building something, be a bridge between between the two two entities. Um, so. Hey, Tom, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually kind of involved both. So when we're talking about the town center and you were talking about the sky bridge, is the hospital committed to paying for and building that? Is that what I understood? They're the one who put put the concept up. Well, that's that's our belief. I mean, none of this has been negotiated, but they, they, they need a way to connect their campuses and, and it's and they need they they really like the residential piece of this, what it offers their employees. So I, I, I believe they would be they would, but we don't have any agreements to that end. Who is representing the hospital? Uh, Jim Alvarez, VP. Uh, 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 Eileen He, she's the uh, uh, property management person, uh, and they have some consultants. Uh, Anyone from the board of directors or? I mean, my concern with this, or one of the things, not necessarily a concern, but one of the items that pops into my head is so we're going to do an application with potentially, you know, including an area that is going to be made walk -up, considered walkable um, because there's a sky bridge that's going to go in. And I mean, I don't, I don't see the taxpayers paying for that. So I, I don't know. Have you know, we talked to the hospital and asked them for any type of formal commitment on that piece of it? Seems like it would be an expensive piece. Uh, something to design. It would be a, a huge cost. So I'm just curious. Well, well, again, I mean, we're in the planning the stages here. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Randy. Uh, yeah. So the hospital has several factors um, that they have to consider and so you can see from their earlier plan when they were looking at doing structured parking and what that price tag uh, ultimately was and they determined it was too much so in some ways 
what they're looking for is something that's less expensive than that, but is still not necessarily going to be what we might term inexpensive solution because they have um, they have to have the building within 250 yards of the existing hospitals if they want to do an additional um, building and then they also have parking needs to go with all of that and so for them they really have to very carefully allocate their space and meet their requirements for um, connectivity. You know, they're going to have staff going back and forth. Um, so walking up to the crosswalk at the mall entrance road um, and then back down is, is not um, viable for them either. So the Skywalk um, Skybridge thing is their, their idea and it's something that they're pursuing. I don't think they're at a point yet where they have um, a price tag or an engineered plan, but um, you know, Paul was working closely with them with regards to where it is they think they might be positioning it and, and such. So that sort of um, infrastructure is going to be necessary if they're going to be able to use their other piece of land, how they envision it. Even if all they're going to do is put satellite parking over there, they still need to be able to get people back and forth. Yeah, so what happens if they don't? But that is. Does that impact the, the plan at all in any way, shape, or form for the, the town? We're under no obligation. I didn't hear the beginning of that question. I, I got it, Brandon. So the town's under no obligation under any of this. It's, it's a plan, right? So we, we need developers to buy into this idea. We're not going to build these buildings. Uh, uh, and we believe that the hospital has a vested interest in this plan and will we'll take steps to participate. Uh, so, no, we have not negotiated any of this. We don't even know if this is going to, to receive approval, but, but it's, 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 it's been months of discussion, good faith discussion, uh, and we, we believe that they're, they're good partners. So, uh, I mean, we're going to be dotting I's and crossing T's for many, many months to come, if not years, and years to come. So, uh, is there any questions on the neighborhood development area? <coughs> Second one. to uh, put motions in to uh, allow these draft applications to be submitted to the Department of Community Housing and Community Affairs uh, for their review. I have, I have one more yeah. question about that process. So it goes to this committee that reviews the plan for us and tells us whether or not it's, it's good enough to it's submit. It's their staff. It's, you know, it's, the, it's the same staff though, right? I mean, it's the same group of people that would do the ultimate, no. The downtown board is like 20 different. Um, Chuck, you've been a, have you, you've been a Well, I don't, I've, I've never been through the process, but the downtown uh, board uh, consists of a variety of people. I know, for instance, BNRC and Preservation Trust of Vermont collectively get to name one person. So it's all okay. these. So it's not it's ACCD. not state. Yeah, it's not just state. Uh, what Tom is talking about is is a review at the staff level, where then you folks will then make changes if necessary, and then submit the formal application. So doing this isn't the formal application; it's getting their feedback, yeah. the staff level feedback. Why do we need to vote on it to submit it? If it's a draft. Why not? Yeah. At least then it, it shows that the board is behind it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not comfortable yet. Um, but I mean, there's four other board members, so. Yeah. Well, the only thing is, is that as it is, uh, we're putting in a, a draft plan to be reviewed by the state, and then 
turn back to us for changes or what they feel to be changes. Is that my understanding? Yes. And then that ultimate uh, uh, application comes back to the select board for final approval to yep. go to the downtown board. So basically we're just uh, uh, voting to approve submitting this to the state of Vermont staff for their review to be returned to us. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion? Should we do a motion for each individually or can we do them as a combination? I'd rather you do them individually. individually. Yeah. Okay. I make the motion to approve the moving forward of the draft Newtown Center application to the state of Vermont for review and ultimate approval. Hopefully. You have a second? Justin, Angelina. Yeah, um, so individually, right? Yes. The, this the is the motion is to individually approve. Yes, this is now the motion was for the new town center application now. For the draft, yeah. The draft. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Yeah, I would. I'd like to have maybe, I don't know if any other select board members have talked, or any select board members for that matter, I should say, have talked with the abutters, uh, like Wayne, but I don't know, you know, I don't know, I mean, I guess it, it doesn't seem like the town has an opinion that it impacts them in any way, shape, or form, and I understand where you're coming from, Brandy, uh, but I, uh, I, I think I have, what I understood is, there's pros and cons to it, but my last understanding was that, you know, some of these people thought that it may not be, may, may be problematic for their properties, and they, they, they thought that even the, uh, this application, this initial application could be an issue. So I, I, if I'm going to vote for it, I'd be more comfortable doing so if we had more of enough, like maybe another public hearing about these after, after these have been set out for review to the people that have said they have an issue on it. That's where I'm at on it. So I'm, I'm not comfortable. I'm going to abstain. So, so, or vote. so these individuals you're mentioning have been invited to all the planning commission meetings, have been invited to all these select board meetings. They're not in attendance here. That uh, They've been, giving the, been given the, um, uh, the agenda as we have, we, we have, we have, met with them. We believe they are comfortable with it. Again, I, I don't want to speak for Wayne. However, if, if this board wants to, if, if, if you add that property to the Newtown Center, it, the Newtown Center is not going to get approved. So what, what is more valuable? The, that one property or the Newtown Center? So that's a, I think it's a, it's a clear choice for you to make. Any other discussion? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm concerned. Um, you know, our our largest town taxpayer and developer, who's developed more land in Berlin than probably anyone. Um, didn't have the answers today when I talked to him about whether or not he, he was comfortable with the plan as proposed. I see no harm unless if Carla tells me different that there's a timeline that um, is going to put us way behind that we can't wait two weeks and get make sure that um, Mr. Lamberton and his associates that own the, the abutting properties are comfortable with the plan. That, that's that's the way I'm looking at it. So mm -hmm. the question then, John, say he's not comfortable with the plan. So are you going to, you're saying then scrap the plan? I'm going to have to weigh that option. It's, it's a hypothetical at this point. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. There, there's four other members here. I mean, I'm not holding anyone up about twisting anyone's arms. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you what my concerns are at this point. 
There is no, what does it hurt to wait two weeks, Tom? Till our next meeting. I mean, this has been every single select board meeting we've had, we've talked about this yeah. new, yeah. new center that's gonna happen over the next 25 years, yeah. right? Why not wait two more weeks? Granny, what's the time frame they have to review it? Don't they have a certain number of days? I think the issue is basically. Um, yes, they have up to they they can take up to three months. They can take up to that. And that's their review, the state's review of it. Correct. I mean, I think the issue, I think the timing is simply a, a reflection of the idea that we wanted to get it before the downtown board in the early part of the year. Um, I I am a. I mean, I think, I think the question is, does this, is this detrimental to Wayne in any way? And I don't think that it is. It may not benefit him to the degree that he would choose, but I think ultimately, again, I haven't spoken to him for a while. I've only, I just only know he's been having, excuse me? Oh, um, but I, but my, the emails I've seen going back and forth, it seems as though there was a lot of common Mm -hmm. agreement about what this meant and I don't think it harms him in any way if that's a question I, and I do think it helps him with the Act 250 criteria that he was um, asking about but I again I we, we don't want to speak for Wayne I'm surprised Wayne's actually not here or, or on the phone but he may have had another commitment um, I you know I leave it to you guys I, 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 I what question needs answered? May I ask the thing about the timing? Go ahead, Brandy. Uh, there is one other project that is oh, time sensitive, right. and one of the reasons that the yeah. Planning Commission has been trying to keep this moving at as quick a pace as we reasonably have been able to in 2020, uh, and that is the Fox Run project. Oh. They are facing a deadline of decision uh, and the possibility of getting funding uh, for their um, project again that'll roll around probably somewhere around March of next year and if there isn't um, a sense of what is happening with the Berlin Newtown Center by that point uh, they're unlikely to get their project funded and that project is going to get most likely shelved um, for the foreseeable future because they have another project in Barry City. Hello, you think Justin? Yeah, I'm just going to ask that question. Oh, did we talk to Brandy? No. Oh. oh. Can so, you still hear us, Brandy? I can hear you. Oh. Did someone just ask something and there was a bit of a, there was just a lot of noise. No, we have communication issues <laughs> going on here. So yeah, I forgot about the Fox Run. Did you hear me? Yes, we yes we did. Okay, good. And and I think the other thing to re, to to keep in mind is we still would have to go through more public processes before this ever goes gets submitted. Um, it's not. This is not the end of the line as far as the public input. Um, and, and again. We, we 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 could we could submit it today and get Wayne's comments in so, two weeks. We'll submit it then. We need a vote. No, we don't. Not for the, a draft. The uh, the how does the tip district fit into this? I mean, it's it's uh, a, a, uh, one of the vital elements of uh, financing this, and it's talked about in this application. And again, there's only one left in Washington County. And yeah. yeah. Okay. And everybody is waiting for the town to show an interest in pushing this forward. Okay. Any more comments? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Angelina. Angelina. I are think you I prefer to wait to hear more from Wayne. Okay. 
Justin? Justin got knocked off the line. Okay. John? Happy to take it up in two weeks. Or sooner. So those opposed? Aye. draft to the Department of Housing and Community Affairs. Uh, no. So are you in favor of it? She, she had said she wanted to wait and hear from Wayne. I, I think she's having trouble I wanted here. to wait for Wayne. I, I think that's what I, what I said. And then there was a disruption, so I couldn't hear what the, what was said, that's all. So I, so no, I'm going to, I would like to wait for a wing. Right. Okay. So motion fails. Okay, how about the neighborhood development area? Which includes Mr. Lamberton's property. Tom, may I add something? Yes. We can't submit the MBA okay, without yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you, Brandy. Okay. Tom or Brad, which way were you voting? I'm in favor. It's just a draft. I mean, I'd much rather have okay. it get in there and have people or have the state at least see that we have an interest in pushing this yeah. forward. If we're going to wait for one developer, uh, yeah, I want to be I want to be super clear here. I am in favor of this, but as I've said since the first time it's been brought up since I've been on this board, that I've had this concern. And it has not been fully addressed because I, I well, call well, well, How do we get it fully addressed, John? If we talk about it every two weeks, right? We've talked about it, you, you admit, we've talked about it for every two weeks for how long? What is it good, what's it gonna take to get it addressed? You uh, talked to Mr. Lamberton today, correct? And he did not have the answers he needed. He so, did not have the answers to understand. So what happens if he never has the answers he's needed? Well, that would be a problem. That would be. What, what, I can't hear what Are you giving me a hard time? No, I'm just telling you that is right. That would be a problem. I just think that it's to a flat surface. Unfortunate that that that's the way it's going to be. I think that we've gone out of our way to make sure that you know we've addressed his concerns. Whether we have or not, I don't know. But I do think it's unfortunate to scrap a plan that we spent a lot of money on. I don't think if, we, I if don't one think person doesn't it. agree with it. I don't think we've scrapped it. No, but there's it seems like there's intent to scrap it. If, if um, with some part of some of the board members, if if he doesn't agree, and I think that's unfortunate. And I and I like Wayne, and I I don't want to I don't want to disrespect him in any way. I think it's about knowing what we're getting into and having full visibility of the issue. Right? And I and and I'm surprised that he said that he hasn't gotten all the answers yet because I think a lot of that's been talked about but but I understand John I'm not if, if, I understand what you're saying I just I just hope this, that this isn't going to end the end this right. process if at, because yeah, um, if he gets the answers and it doesn't work out or it's not you know it's still not his favor. At least we all know, and we're making a, a decision. It's not like, well, I think so, but I'm not speaking for so and so, right? Well, we're I'm not getting into that situation. We all know with a full. I I, I can't. I don't know what he's waiting to hear. But my concern is, how do we determine that, and when is that determined? I mean, that's all I'm asking. And that's what a public meeting is for: is for anyone to be in attendance who has concerns or discussion or wants to bring forth issues. So if there are questions that Mr. Lamberton has posed that he doesn't feel he has answers to, then I would say, what are those questions, and how do we get that answer? Yeah. 
I'm not aware of the questions at this point, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm very much in favor of moving the draft forward because I think we're in a very unprecedented time. We're moving toward the end of the year with what you've said about the other entity and the fact that we want this to go forward in January. I just really think we should move it forward sooner versus later. And I'm a proponent of it. And I, I have high respect for Mr. Lamberton, but I also feel that with his expertise and knowledge and the dedication to the town, if he had extreme concerns, I think he would be here or send a representative on his behalf. That's just my take. Okay, well. Revisit the question in two weeks, I guess. When does, uh, when does the uh, Fox Run need their information? Friday, end of December. Okay. Randy, Fox Run, end of December? Yeah, they're, they're often as good through the calendar year at this point. Yeah. My understanding. Okay, and thank you, Carla. Thank you, Brandy. Are you, you going to talk about a grant or? I, I can't okay. Well, I, I was thinking about saying about the executive committee thing, but. Okay. Okay. Because that was something. Uh, oh, thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is assuming that we're going to submit an application for a new town center and neighbor development area. It's the application I talked to you of, of, of about. It's a, a, a scoping study uh, for the a multi-use path around the new town center. Uh, price tag about uh, uh, 50k. That's, that's the most that DTRS will fund with 50k, which would require a, a $10,000 uh, match. Match. So. Uh, uh, I'm not quite sure what to do because it's due in, in I think the 27th of November, which is relatively short order. Um, anyways, that's all I have. Can't do any more on that. Um, okay. Uh, use of executive committees, John. So, in the past. We, we've had situations arise where not all the board in, members are getting information on decisions or things that happen in operational times, um, you know, and it's a little harder right now without a town administrator, but how we make decisions through, between meetings, um, if something comes up, who's notified, how, how um, you know, who does Tom talk to? Um, and I, I think based on, I think historically it's been the chair, right? Mm -hmm. It's my opinion that depending on what the situation is, it should go to the liaison. And the liaison should be letting the rest of the board know. Um, so, Any examples? Sure. So if Culvert fails on Fisher Road, he, he doesn't call the town highway liaison, he calls you, right? In, in this situation. Yep. If I'm, the rest of us don't necessarily know that it's failed until we read it in Times Argus, right? So I'm just trying to figure out a way, how do, we, how do we all get on the same page for things that are going on during the week, um, decisions that need to be made? Uh, they do need to be made. Uh, I'm not saying someone shouldn't make them, but I'm saying like, I'm saying the rest of the board should know. Okay. So Tom came up with the thought that maybe an executive committee of two people. I, you know, so that, that's one thing. We could consider that. Or we can consider using the liaisons that are attached to the different areas of government. Right? So for me, it's the police for... Justin, it's the highway department. For Flo, it's the fire department. Um, and, and using the, the liaisons the way they were intended, I think. It's, 
it's not meant to be critical of anyone. I'm just trying to fix the communication problem to make sure that we all understand what the issues are. Well, I, I can only talk to the culvert. Uh, I know I, I uh, sent an email, the blinding email to all the select board members when it failed the second time. I don't know about the first time. I wasn't involved in it. But I know when, it, when it failed the second time, I, I sent a blind email out to, to, to everyone on that. Um, what was the, the meeting was at what, 8 o'clock in the morning at the culvert itself. And I don't think the road foreman was there even. No. I think you, you gave him a... He, he was there earlier, early on, yeah. yeah. directing traffic and yeah. putting up the barricades and stuff. Yeah. Well, I've got no qualms about the liaisons uh, doing that. Means I don't miss work, you know. Basically, yeah. I I just, you know, we can we can figure it out however we want. I don't have anything set in stone, you know, in my mind. I'm just thinking like that way it takes some of the pressure off from you to tell the board every time something goes on, and it puts it in the the functional area of the liaison, right? So, you know, uh, hypothetical, you know, hope it never happens. Fire department has a you know bad fire and there's a there's a fireman that you know perishes in the fire. You know if Tom finds out, he would talk to Flo, who would let the rest of the board know. Um, those type of things, and that way it's not all on um, one person all the time. I would like a list of liaisons. I didn't even know they were all these liaisons to be honest. I just thought there was the police liaison. No, no. There's highway. There's fire department. Um, Public works. Does anybody you know, know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of we did it in public meeting. Yeah. But we did it prior to yeah, there was Dana. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you didn't know. And like I'm not with fire, even though oh, you know I, I was I interested remember, in it, but I couldn't it, remember but, who was yeah. the election. Yeah. Justin is examples. on that, and then I'm public works, and you're the police. Okay. Yeah. Because Justin and I both had interest in it. Oh, I couldn't remember what. But who was we could it? produce that list so that you have it. Tom. That'd be good. Yeah. That's easy enough to do. But. Okay, all set. Yeah. Um, CB direct funding. Yeah. So we had a uh, email from a John Blacksick from the Central Vermont Disaster Animal Response Team, and he says back in. November of 2019, he visited the select board, and I, I went to the minutes, and he did visit select board, and he was uh, he was uh, asking for a donation. I think it was a minor donation of $200, um, but the minutes do, did not reflect that the select board authorized it. Or so my my sense is is the timing of it was that you do a petition like you do for a town meeting and. Yep. And um, uh, he uh, said he, he did not uh, do a petition, he thought the meeting was enough. I said, well, the funding wasn't there, so um, yeah. the funding's not available. I said, I'll bring it to the select board if they want to do, uh, give you $200 for this. That's their decision. But I, I, didn't, I had no, no way to fund this guy. For, yeah. for well, basically, he's asking for a special appropriation. Correct. Yeah, and the the you get the you get your signatures, and then you get put you you get put to the vote on town meeting day. Mm -hmm. Yes. So just tell them no. Nope. Yeah, convey that to them, and That's, I have already told them. That. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. I'll send them that then. Yeah. Okay. The town administrator recruitment. So uh, the hiring committee has uh, uh, gone through two rounds of, of vetting. Um, I sent around to, 
to the hiring, the, this, there's, you guys approved two hiring committees, a smaller one and a, and a more um, uh, additional uh, members uh, hiring committee. Uh, uh, so I sent around today uh, a, a date of uh, looking at November 15th to see if folks are available to meet for in-person interviews. And so um, I got a, a, a five or six responses back, and just just want to encourage everybody else to look at their calendars, get back uh, uh, with that date. That's that's one of the uh, few dates that both candidates can, could be here, uh, yeah. and, and so I envision very similar to what we do with the she got it. Uh, yeah, well, yes. Hall. Yeah. That assuming I can get that. Yeah, that worked real well. Yeah. Well, that works for me. Same for me. November 15th is good. Yes, thank you. I will not be able to make it on the 15th, unfortunately. Okay. Keith? I'm available. Carla's left. She said she was available. Yeah, she just told me she was too. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, anything else on that, Tom? No. Oh, thank, thank you. Will you be sending out resumes and Yeah, I will. Yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. Okay, uh, Town Campus uh, Stormwater Treatment Award. So in your packets, i got to find stuff. Um, you may recall that uh, when, we, when we did the stormwater project, uh, it came over budget. So, uh, it's three pages here. Yep. And so, uh, uh, this, the folks from Central Rock Regional Planning Commission said they thought they could get additional funding for it. So the last page is, is them saying that they got additional funding. So now uh, I request that, uh, uh, that you folks issue a notice of uh, award um, uh, to Dale Percy Inc. and then also a notice to proceed, which I also gave you a copy of. These are the original grant. We'll, we'll yep. use these when we take action. Uh, motion on that. Basically, they have come up with the money to provide the additional funding. Yes, the, uh, the uh, if, if you look on the notice of award, the sixty-five thousand. You know, the original budget was like sixty thousand, so yeah, so we got about five thousand dollars. The town will get five thousand dollars. There's no additional cost. If you look at the uh, the last page, it's, uh, the town's obligation is still nine hundred eighty dollars. Most of that. It's going to be in time with my with my time. Yeah, doing the doing it. So, I'm just a little confused here. This is new new stormwater improvements right here at this yep. building in yep. the town garage. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. It's a little pond out here and collection ditches that take take. Uh, Surface water. Surface water off the majority of the money is coming from the state. Pardon? The, the majority of the money is coming from the state. Is that right? It is. Yeah, and, uh, federal and state money. Okay. Make a motion to award um, the town campus stormwater treatment to uh, DLE Percy Inc. in the amount of sixty-five thousand sixty-five dollars. Second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Angelina? Angelina, did you hear the motion? Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that moves it on to Tudor's license. Before, right? before you get there, there's also this notice to proceed on this. Well, yes, I'm assuming you take action on it because it requires your signature for it. Okay, a motion 
Cooper C. Uh, let's see. Start on um, yeah. April 1st, 2020. Yeah, that's 2021. 2021. Okay. Uh, so moved. Here a second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Angelina? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, in your packet, we've got, uh, I think this is a re recurring uh, type of license, is that Diane? Or? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Mike Muller. The guy doing uh, wreaths and Christmas trees over in the in the uh, Berlin Mall there. I make the motion to approve the peddler's license as presented to us this evening from Mike A. Moeller for Christmas trees and wreaths, ornamental, um, etc. And. That would be from November 27, 2020 to December 24, 2020 from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Angelina? Aye. Okay, and Town Highway Grant Program, one-time supplemental? Uh, yeah, so I, I'm trying to, for folks that applied for uh, highway grants last year, you may recall that they, uh, the state has put all that on hold. I'm trying to find my notes here. Uh, I got a letter from Ashley saying that that the state is doing a one-time supplemental uh, this coming year. I think it's going to probably be based on a similar formula that they use for the for the COVID grant that, that they gave us. Do you know, did the town apply for any highway aid last year? Diane, do you know? I don't think we got rewarded any if we did. Yeah, I think we did apply, but we did not get rewarded. Okay. I don't know if anybody got awarded because of the COVID thing, but. So, there may be money coming to us. Uh, I'll, uh, I actually didn't know if we applied or not, so I gotta figure out if. Uh, you and I can talk about that after. Remember there was that payment that I received for the 30 some thousand? Oh. I wonder if that's it. I wonder if that's it. Good thing. Good back oh, over that with you. Yeah. Excellent. As I did contact the state. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that may be it. So Excellent. Yes. Perfect. Okay, good. Hey, uh, minutes of October 9th. Well, I've never received them, so I, I don't have them here. Okay, we'll skip that then. Uh, Round table flow. I don't have anything this evening, but thank you. John? Um, budget process. Yes, I am starting that. And I've actually talked, to, uh, I was talking with uh, Chief Emeril, but now I'll be talking with uh, James. And I have talked with um, Tim Davis as well, and I think and I've talked with you. So I'm going to start working on that. My goal is to have the majority of the information uh, early on, probably like the next meeting we have in November, at least have a draft of what we're, what we're doing. Okay. okay. But I will be talking with them in the meeting. Okay, so, okay so, so the way you guys do it is you... I can't hear what's being said. Hey, Angelina, She's... I'm going to start the process for the budget for FY22. And I'm going to be working with the chief of police and the highway foreman and the town, acting town administrator. Okay. 
Yeah, so, so my question was just more about the process. So, so the way Berlin does it is you start by going to the department heads, right. asking what they need, yep. putting the budget together, and then we and often, whittle it well, down. And often, what we've done in the past, and I, let me just talk so she can hear me too. What we've done in the past is we do um, bring, like we'll discuss the first one, let's say we can discuss highway. We bring in the road format and discuss just the highway portion of it. Then the next time, and we usually meet like weekly when we're doing this, then we'll bring in the police chief and we'll talk about his. And then uh, we'll do the office stuff. And, and so we usually do, do it in pieces and then we kind of go through the whole thing. After that we ask questions. But in the meantime, if you have questions, you can certainly ask them. But it's sometimes easier to have it in increments. And then if you want to talk to the police chief or with the um, you know, town minister or whomever we have at that meeting, mm -hmm. then they're specific to that particular section of the budget. Okay. That's how we've done it. Not that we have to, but that's what we've done in the past five years. Okay. okay. And you will have a draft every week you will have something. This is the budget so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, donation of uh, select board. Oh, I'll say, um, anything for roundtable, Angelina? Angelina, you wanted to talk about the stipend? I would like to um, call to action the I think the board took action at the last meeting that, that it, it's you can only you can only donate what the amount that you technically earn. So I, I think is that yep. Yeah. I, I think that's that's a really nice thing, Angelina. My my question is only about process. Um, I'm going to ask Tom a question. I just don't want you to think it has anything to do with that. Um, in that type of scenario. The way the way it's the way the budget's presented and the way we're supposed to get the stipend, wouldn't she just sign that over and make the donation herself? Correct. Because of yes. payroll taxes have, and things like that. I have to put that through payroll. Right. There's no question about that. It has to go through payroll. However, she can sign it over to the fire department if she chooses. Yep. Yeah, I just I, I thought that was the case. I just wanted to make sure yeah. everyone understood how that works. You, you, did you hear that, Angelina? Yeah, I heard it. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Any executive session? I do. Uh, uh, for personnel and contract, and I'd like to uh, uh, be invited, Diane Isabel, and uh, Keith Van Eiders, I am here. To, okay. To the executive session. Here, motion. So moved. Here, second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Aye.